YouTube, what's up? I get a lot of people asking me, what is it like to play Diablo 2 on Nintendo Switch? So I thought I would make a video of my experience playing Diablo 2 on Nintendo Switch. For some background, I did play Diablo 2 LOD back in the day from about 2001 to 2006 on PC, obviously. And I liked that and I had no issues, but I have only played Diablo 2 on Switch since its launch in 2021. I will go over my setup, the equipment that I'm using, the device, settings, button mapping, key binding, the community and gameplay, and then I'll wrap it up with some things that are unique to Nintendo Switch. So if you are curious about D2 on Nintendo Switch or you're new to the Switch, hopefully you'll find this video helpful. Timestamps and links will be in the description below. You can play D2 on the original Nintendo Switch, the Switch Lite and the new Switch OLED. The game runs in a solid 30 frames per second. In handheld mode, it's 720p and in dock mode, it runs at 1080p. I have the Nintendo Switch OLED and I play in dock mode about 90% of the time. I prefer to play on a big screen. I use a, a Switch Pro controller, which is very comfortable and easy to play with. The huge benefit to the Switch and the Switch OLED is your ability to play in dock mode as well as handheld mode. I play in handheld mode as well and it's really good. The screen is bright and the game runs really well. It's nice to be able to bring the Switch with you on a vacation, sitting on the couch or watching TV laying back, kind of doing some farming. There are a few settings that you're going to want to change on the Nintendo Switch. This is the default uh, video tab. The audio tab is all, these are all the default, nothing, cha no, no changes there. And then this is the gameplay. So there's a few things here that are already defaults, which is nice. So there's auto gold pickup and auto party invite, which is good. There's a few things that you want to change here. So I turned off, so this is on by default. I turned off the camera shake. And the camera shake is kind of when it happens with Diablo. I didn't really feel like it added anything, so I, I turned that off. I felt it kind of annoying. Weapon swap separate skill buttons. So this is off by default, which means if you map your buttons and then you swap weapons, all your mapping are all still the same. But by turning this on, you're able to have a separate button map based on your weapon swap. So this is really good for pre-buff stuff and CTA. So I weapon swap and then I have all the buttons at the bottom there. So I have my CTA buffs, my frozen armor, thunderstorm, and energy shield. And then when I swap off, my button mapping is different. And then also the key binding for the ZL swap is also different. So you can have six buttons mapped regularly and then six buttons mapped on the ZL swap. And then when you swap your weapons, you can have a different set of six and a different set of six on your ZL. And they obviously could be the same, but it's nice to be able to have that freedom because when I was playing early, I didn't know this and I ran out of buttons and I kept having to switch skills. But again, with a CTA buff, you do not need that mapped all the time because you only need it mapped when you're holding that specific weapon. So it's very useful to turn that on. Your uh, A button, the A button is always gonna be, so you can see the action, the A comes up here. So A is always gonna be your action, but you can also bind a skill to, to A as well. So for me on the Sork, I have telekinesis as my action item, but if you were a melee character, you might have your main skill as your uh, A button or if you were another caster character, you might have your one of your main skills as, as A. But I keep it as TK because it's kind of similar action uh, to the, the A button. You can also map and pick up buttons straight to the cube on console. So a regular pickup would just be regular A. I have no space in my inventory. But if I hold ZL and A, you can see that I have it mapped to pick up to cube. So I can just pick up items straight into my cube that way. So it is nice to be able to do that without having to open up your, your inventory menu. You can be moving around, find some items. Gold is auto pickup. So like these rejuice, I can just pick these up, hold the ZL and then hit A to move them straight into my cube. You can see that your belt buttons here uh, there's like a D-pad looking thing. So you see it left, up, down where the scroll is and to the right. So that is my belt here. 
So that is the D-pad. The D-pad is located just under the uh, L joystick. And you just hit the direction for whatever you want. So if I hit the down on the D-pad, it's going to open up a scroll. So I, I keep my scrolls in my belt. I don't have the T TP tomb in my inventory. But one thing to note with this is if you're moving around using your left thumb for the joystick, you really can't hit any of those other buttons to drink pots or drop a TP while you're in motion. The only way to do that would be if you use your other hand. You can obviously use your other thumb or your other hand while I'm moving, but it just it just doesn't come up as a, an issue really. It's easy enough to be moving around and then hit one of those buttons if you need a pot or something. For all my characters, I have X as my teleport. X is mapped as my teleport, and I do that for consistency across all my characters. So characters other than the Sork with teleport charges or Enigma, I reserve the X button for teleport because that's kind of how you move around. Movement on the Nintendo Switch or on console to me just makes more sense with a joystick. I feel like movement with the mouse was kind of odd for me in the beginning because I was used to first person shooters on PC where you would use WSAD to move. So clicking the mouse to move seemed kind of unnatural to me, but obviously when I played it on LOD, it was fine and it's okay. And I understand PC guys are gonna be fine with it and want the mouse, which is their choice, but I just prefer the uh, joystick. It makes more sense to me. Also with the, the joystick, I don't know if they have this on PC, but um, switching from run to walk is just pressing down the, the, the L stick. So you can see there it switches from walk to run. Walk to run. But uh, with the controller, you can have some sort of throttling. Like I can just press the button slightly and I can move slowly and then I can run fast if I want. I'm not sure if you have that in PC, if you can do that, or if it's just click and it's always run or it's always walk. Now in your inventory menu, you have these buttons at the top. You can hit these Z, L buttons to Z and R buttons to pan through these. You have this little circle thing, which is tied to your left joystick where you can hover over items. You can pick stuff up and move them and drop them. But you can also hold to hold the equip button to swap them pretty quickly. So moving items from one spot to to the other is not too bad. You can also quick send stuff to cube like you would on PC. So this menu is not too, too bad. One menu that is sort of difficult on console is your mercenary. So there is no sense of picking something up from your inventory and dragging it onto their, their their little icon at the top left like you would on PC. So when you're swapping stuff to your Merc, you do have to have space in your inventory or space in your cube to be able to pick something up and like equip it on them that way. So swapping gear on your Merc is certainly a little more annoying on console. Placement of traps is something to get used to. Because again, there's no mouse. Traps are sort of in a fixed distance if there's nothing to target. But on console, there's some sense of auto targeting. So you can see here, like I'm dropping bombs because I'm facing these monsters, it goes there. And if I'm not, it's a very short distance. So this is me just holding down the button. But then if there's monsters to target, it'll sort of target the monster. So laying down traps is a fixed distance like this, but if there are monsters to target, it'll put the trap sort of next to them. So it does take some getting used to. So you don't have a 100% accuracy like you would on PC, where you could just click the mouse button to where you want to place the trap. So for this style, this build, it's, you know, you're placing the traps kind of randomly around, kind of close to where you need to. You can target and, and place them exactly on top of each other if you just hold the button and don't move or don't move the joystick. You can place them right on top of each other. So before I pop this last seal, 
I'll just show you kind of a a typical trap assassin method for Diablo. So typically you would put the the traps in like sort of a star shape, but if I just kind of try and do that, it's not really great. So if you stand in the middle here and lay traps and just kind of like spin around, then you can get the 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 traps to lay in that that sort of like crisscross sort of star pattern. You can also just find a spot that you want and then lay the traps on top of each other that way. Pre-buff. And so also these uh the ZL buttons. So like other games like Zelda, you would hold the ZL button to hold your shield or while you're in battle. So what I do for this game is when I'm holding ZL, I you I have my skills mapped for battle. So like things that I might use for boss killing, I, I map them to the, the ZL. So they're not your typical skills that you're running around doing stuff. It's sort of in your boss uh, section. So we'll pop this seal. I'll do a kind of a star-like pattern by doing the spin thing here. And then you'll see the bombs I will launch. So there's a short distance here, but as soon as Diablo comes out, they'll, they'll sort of target him. So you can see that there's some sense of auto-aiming when you're using some of the skills. So this is the main screen. In Diablo, you can choose online or offline. I only have one offline character. All my characters are online here. So I can choose between the characters that I have. Once I hit this play button, it brings up this menu. This menu is how to play games. You have your private games, your game creator, and your game list. Game list is like the lobby to where you would find games public games that are up that you want to join game creator is how you would create games and then private is how you would start a quick private game this is my friends list if i want to see where they are i can just hit the a button and it'll show me sort of where like what game they're in and i can sort of try and join their game i usually don't do this because a lot of times people are doing their own thing you don't want to just join somebody's game and then this is where you would see the ranking for the current ladder season but so to make a private game you would just click this button and you would choose your difficulty hell nightmare normal pretty easy and that would jump you right into a game when you're creating a game it brings up this menu and you can choose your difficulty we'll choose hell you can choose your max player count again on Nintendo Switch. The max player count is four. I leave this off, but level difference, you can set that if you want to make sure that there's a tighter range of people joining your game. And then this checks off if the game should be terrorized, enabled, or not. You can make a custom game with whatever name you want. You have 15 characters. Or you can make a password-protected game, again, 15 characters, and then uh, a password. This is good for doing trades. If you don't want to swap your friend code, you can make a, game, a public or a private game and then invite people using the game name and password. You can also pick certain quests if you want. So let's say we're doing the quest to search for Kane. I can make a game that says search for Kane. And then you see the, the random digits at the top right. So that would create a game that says search for Kane. And then there's the, the digits. So that people can understand like, hey, I need to do that quest and then join up that game. So you can kind of quickly make games like this if you want. Also, you can choose specific bosses. So you can do Andy, Duriel, Mephisto, the Cow King, Bale, and Diablo. So if you're doing Chaos Sanctuary runs, you can do Diablo. If you're doing Bale runs, you can do Bale. And it would just say Bale and then the name. You can also do zones. So you could do the Chaos Sanctuary you could do free roam. Free roam is good for just making a quick game that anybody can join and you can go anywhere. Tristram. So you can see that you can have different names for the games or quick names, if, if, if you will. And then under other, you have your pandemonium event for Ubers, Uber Diablo, and PvP.
Typically, you really don't use these. Most likely, people would use the PvP in some cases. This is the public game lobby. So this is Nintendo Switch North America. And I've set my filters to Hell and Terrorized only. So these are the games that are here right now in my area. You can see the little bubbles are for the ping. And then this is non-ladder. So there may not be... Let me just turn the filters off. So you can see sort of all the games. Obviously, there's more people active playing on ladder than non-ladder. So these are the non-ladder games that are up right now. So if I wanted to join any of these games, I can just pick which one I want. Hover over for a bit. You can see that it, this one's 16 minutes in. A, night, a level 87 pally was in there. I can reset the list. So you can see there's some trade games in here. Trading in, trading online on Switch is kind of difficult because there's no chat. So it's hard to negotiate. Really, if you're going to do any sort of trading, you want to use Discord. I use Discord for most of the trading I do. So you can just pick a game and then hit join. And then so you see when I enter the game, it pretty much does the auto invite. So it auto parties. So I'm already sort of invited and partied with this, this guy. Switch has a limit of four players that can join a game. So if I wanted to invite anybody, I can only get up to four players in this game. And leveling. So leveling in Diablo is, again, limited to four players. So it's not scaled as in... If I'm playing here in players two, it's not acting like that's players three. And if I have a game of four players, that's not acting like it's a P8 game on PC or other. So just note that leveling on the Switch is sort of trumped by, by four. So it is more difficult to level on Nintendo Switch. That probably goes the same with drops and super unique sorry, super chess, they're probably limited to the same number. And the reason for this is when you're playing on single player, you can change the difficulty from one to eight. And there was a guy, I think it's Hyperdox. He posted a video testing this theory and it was proven that a player's eight experience was only able to get on single player and you couldn't get a player's eight experience from killing a monster on a player four game online. So he did prove that. I'll link to that video. A nice thing about Nintendo Switch, I'm sure you can do this with other graphics cards for PC, but let's say you're uh, magic finding on Switch and you find something cool like this broad axe, sweet. I want to showcase that I saw that drop. You can hit the screenshot button and it will record the last 30 seconds of gameplay. So this is unique to Nintendo Switch, which is cool. I think it's a great feature. So I can just... But I can just show you... It, take, it took a recording of the last 30 seconds of gameplay. So it's really good for if you're playing in the game and you're not recording or streaming, you can just, you know, if, you, if something cool happens or you get a good drop, you can just hit that record button and it'll record the last 30 seconds. So just by holding Z, L, and the minus button, you can turn on the old school graphics, which is fun to play. It's fun to kind of see that and it's, you know, real time which is nice diablo 2 has cross-platform progression meaning you can take the same account and same characters and play them on your pc your ps5 or your switch but there's no cross play cross-platform play you can't be on a you know a ps5 and play somebody on nintendo switch so it is nice if you have the game on both you can level up a character and do trades and stuff on pc and then if you want to take the game on a vacation or on the go, you can put it on your Switch and kind of play that way. 
I am recording this on my MacBook Pro using the Elgato HD60 Plus and OBS Studios. So yeah, that's it. If you have any other questions or I missed anything, you want to make any comments, feel free to do so below. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped. And uh, yeah, that's it.